I am a horrible passenger. I I break. I'm I'm a personal breaker. Oh, you do? I do, but not with you. You don't. Oh no! Oh no! Fire in the booth! Fire in the booth! Oh my god! Well, I can cancel my visectomy appointment. Subscribe now and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. You alright? No. But continue. I want to talk about draft sleepers. This is always the... Oh, wait, I love what the draft is sleepers episode. Oh, this is the part of the year. Um, Where we talk about guys that, like... The have, most obscure guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you guys ever see the movie... Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, obviously, everyone's seen it. I don't know why I asked. Uh, Billy Madison? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> and he calls up Steve Buscemi. And he goes, hey, man, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for bullying you all this time. He goes, oh, it's no problem, man. He leans back and crosses his name of people to kill. I know. That's Paul has a list on his next to his bed of all the trap sleepers over the last, like, seven years that he's loved. And he's following them. Yeah. He's seeing what's what happened. <laughs> and some of them, you know, they don't pan out. One was David Johnson, though. Yep. You were a Love very David high Johnson. on David Johnson. Everyone was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I was adamant he was the best running back in the draft. 100% adamant. And that was a good draft year for running backs. Yes. It was like David Johnson's best running back. Not draft. necessarily a sleeper, but Trey Wayans you were a fan of. Mm -hmm. Yep, like Trey Wayans. I was a fan of, unfortunately. I, my guys never pan out. Yeah. <laughs> the number one you always mentioned yeah. is Jeff Janis. Jeff Janis. You like Chris Conley, too. I did like Chris Conley. Yeah. Because he was... Below the radar. Yep. Well, let me see what you hear. You hear. All right. Uno, number one. So I know everybody's saying the Bills are out of the offensive line. Oh, saying, saying six know, of out them. Of, out of offensive line. But they're not out of them in like the third, fourth, fifth round. Those are all still totally plausible, right? Okay. So there's one guy, and you know I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of this university, but... Toa Lobenda. Is this a sleeper or your favorite? No, like I know, no, no. Like, no I know. It's the guy who's Owens, Obigwanai, whatever. Yeah, it's dude, like, it's hard because a lot of times when I talk about draft sleepers, I'll pick the most unique name yes. and be like, oh, this guy's going to be great. <laughs> I just slide him in just to talk about him. No, uh, Toa Lobenda. Um, so if you go back and watch the Senior Bowl, we know the Bills are big fans of the Senior Bowl. Yes. Right? He's left tackle at USC. There was actually a few plays where he was going up against, you know, some top pass rushers. That's why the senior bowl I think is so important. Yes. Because you could, you know, you can look at guys, you can watch film, and then the conversation comes up, well, who did he play? In the senior bowl, you you can level that argument, yeah, right? Yeah. You can get the you can get a good read on the guys on how they go against positional players. More, mostly in practice. Mm -hmm. Like in the game setting it's one thing. Right. But then you get to see if it, if it transfers over. So if they're doing well in practice and they perform, they stink it up in the game. Right. It's a different story. But well, then, that, and you, you get know. to see these players move because sometimes, mm -hmm. like, they'll play left tackle, then they'll play right tackle, or center will move to guard, or, you know, yeah. from, a, from a line position, it's a really interesting game to watch because the guys shift around all over the place usually, yes. so it's nice. Um, but Toa Lobenda, on a few plays, was going against, um, uh, who was it? The name, the name of the pass rusher escapes me, but that's okay. Um, Gary Bosa? No, I, I, I just don't remember. Um, but he was going against the, one of the speed rushers, and he actually arced the whole way around the quarterback and kept going. He kept going. He made almost a semicircle. He ended up almost over at right tackle, still in front of the guy. This happened like two or three times. He <laughs> up, 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 all the way around in a semicircle, nope. all the way around the QB. And you see that, and something like that, and you go, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out, time out, time out. What kind of motor is this guy got? Yeah, like, I got to go back and see this guy. And that's what prompted me to go back and start watching tape of Tom Lobenda. And that happened a lot. <laughs> He just always stays in front of guys. Now, again, went to USC, right? So run blocking, really not super sure of no, because they're no. because but of the pro style. But, but it is pro style. style, right? And his pass protection grades are going to be pretty good. So mm -hmm. he's gonna he's always going to do pretty well against the pass. Okay. So if you're looking in the third, fourth, fifth round, 
Um, I'm okay with taking Toa Lobin down just because, again, he's a guy that you could... You he's a tackle. He's a tackle, yeah. You got measurables on him? I'm just curious. Uh, I can grab him, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just curious because, like, if you're talking about this guy at a tackle to the third, fourth, fifth round, yeah, the guy is 6'3". Um, you know, no, he's bigger than that. No, I'm just saying, like, if... Why, if he is what you say he is and he exhibits these traits, why isn't he here, uh, second or first? Because well, of USC? Yeah, because he USC was awful. Well, it didn't have to be because of him. 6'3", 300. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, he's not 6'3". Six, three. That's a guard. That's why he's not grading out high in a tackle. Because he's a guard. But, ideal size for a guard. Maybe put on 20 pounds. I disagree. If he has 32 inch arms, I'm going to fight you right now. I swear to God. I'm looking. I love his arm length. Because that was the next thing that I needed to know. <laughs> 35. Wow. Lies. That's not him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I don't know if he measured in at his pro day for arm length because I can't. I can't. Find he wasn't it. invited to the combine. He was not a combine. Invited. Really? No. We went to the senior bowl. Mm-hmm. Huh. I don't understand. All right, so that was one. Total open down. Again, size. I'm not going to tell you that size isn't a problem, right? But watching him, and again, he was at the he's in the Pac-12, so mm-hmm. that's not many people have seen him. No. Um, that's one thing about like what's what's a good example of conferences that primarily go three man fronts to stop the spread. Pac twelve does that. What about the big? The big does it too. Big ten will do it. So the big ten the big twelve no big twelve, I'm sorry. Yeah, the big twelve, the Pac twelve, they feature a lot of those spread offenses. Mm-hmm. Those spread offenses the whack. Right. And what one thing that's important to know about when you're grading out guys or looking at guys that are on the line mm-hmm. is if you're in the Pac-12 or you're in the Big 12 or you're in the, the Wax, another great example, and with these teams and these spread offenses, you're not going four down linemen because you want that extra backer and coverage. Yes. So, like, you look at tackles, and that's why tackles at the Pac-12 don't always grade out all that well because they're going against just these monsters. And usually it's one-on-one with these big guys, not speed rushers. That's why for Toa Lobanda, at the Senior Bowl, he went up against a bunch of speed rushers, and he's arcing them around the QB. You go, whoa, okay, this guy moves better than I thought he could. <laughs> but he's that's why... He's lighter. That's, that's why. Right, but that's why I like him, because when I go back and watch him, he's going against these huge defensive ends. He's not giving up pressure against these monsters. So that's, that's why I... I think it's important to just take that grain of salt when you're watching tape. You do have to take into, into consideration the conference that they play in and the type of system that they run and how that conference is trying to, you know. Yeah, but if, more, if most of the system. teams, I, I mean, I, I'd like to think most of the teams run pro style out there in the Pac-12. Well. I think how pro style defense, pro style defense to counteract that. You're going to have a guy that is a speed rusher on one side and a bookend run stopper on the other side. So, was he right or left tackle? Left. So, wow, it's... Yeah, it does. It definitely wakes you up, but I don't know if his size and weight will deter a team because usually if you want a left tackle, you want a 6'5", 330, 340 guy. Sure. Um, You know, depending on the size, I mean, he could be a solid guard. But then when you talk about a guy getting drafted in in a position change, that's really tough. You know... That you don't take those guys high. No. But like you said, no. third, fourth, fifth round. I think fourth or fifth probably more likely. Well, if you're looking at a position change, point, if you yeah, already have him earmarked at guard, be like, listen, you, he'll be our starting guard. Uh-huh. Take him to third then. Take a shot. He's got to be cheaper than a lot of options that are out there. All right. Next up. Everybody loves the connections. You make the connection all the time of Luke Keekley. To so, Matt Milano. Excuse me. You do. You make it all the time. Don't do not do that to me. What? Don't falsify information. That's exactly what you do. 
I mean, say, no, no, no. I make the reference because you want to put Milano in the middle yep. of a Sean McDermott defense. And then I just reference that they both went to Boston College. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I don't say Milano is Keekly. <laughs> Einhard is Fako. Fako is Einhard. <laughs> Einhard is a man. Are you ready? Uh-huh. So we're going back to Boston College because Boston College finds they they have proven to be a good college to snag late round picks from. They really have been exactly. So teams look at Boston College in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth rounds and say, okay, let's who's their best player? All right, let's see if we can snag them. Right, Zach Allen edge rusher from Boston College Ooh, has some of the best pass rush moves you're going to see on tape period and this is going this is including uh, like Sean Gary These are, this is including Montez Sweat this is including those guys he's 6'5 by 280 good lord man. He's a big dude good lord man 6'5 280 uh, edge rusher mm-hmm. for Boston College is that ACC? Uh, in Boston College is oh I don't know. Looks like you're gonna have to take a book off the shelf. To I know. Conferences now. I don't remember conferences. <laughs> if we're talking ACC, we're talking Virginia Tech. We're talking Clemson. Mm-hmm. We're talking. Um, oh, who else is I go block. <laughs> Point being is you're, you're you're there with some teams that have some studs. It's not like he's playing in a conference that doesn't mean it. Right. No, Boston College, well, that's, again, why Boston College is looked at as, you know, hey, let's go. Yeah, they are in the ACC. Okay. Um, that's why Boston College is looked at as, you know, a college you can go snag picks from because the competition level is pretty good. Oh, we got Milano in the fifth. Right, right, exactly. So, Zach Allen, if you're looking for somebody who can bring you some pressure on the outside, I like him a lot. Um, couple problems. Oh, here we go. Well, his 40-yard dash time at the combine was a five. Which someone who's 6'5", 280 should run. You think so? <laughs> a normal human being that is 6'5", right. 280. That's even kind of fast. It is, pede- I, it is pedestrian. I will, I, it's a pedestrian Ford. Um, oh, but, but that's, but again, you start that looking awful. at... That's pretty you, awful. What? Five. Yeah, it's not good. But again, you're looking at late round picks. You're not looking at a guy who, you know, burned it up. Bench oh, press wait. was 24. But again... Middle Looking at pack. size, his arm length's like 35 something. That's, that's ridiculous then. So 24 is that's a good in the number. 30s of his. If he's that's what I mean. So the numbers are a little deceiving. His arms are so long, but the bench was still 24. That's a good number for a guy with arms that long. Put him at defensive tackle. Put 20 pounds on him. Put him at D tackle. Um, his three cone drill. I'm kidding. Oh God. Seven three four. <clears throat> Which isn't hateful. It's. You are talking about a sleeper, so these numbers exactly. aren't going to be impressive. Exactly. So, right. Okay. Uh, but you're talking about the moves that he has within game. So he's a guy that his numbers at the combine are going to reflect what he does on the field. Right. Okay. Yep. Right. Game speed versus speed speed. Right. 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 Yep. So I like Zach Allen a lot. Go back and take a look at him. Because I know you probably haven't looked at Zach Allen at all. My question for you is... Toa and Zach, the two guys that you've mentioned, is it a is it a situation where you're just picking a guy for a depth signing because I believe they've already done that, or is that do these look like two guys that could eventually? I think Zach Allen could start. Zach Allen could eventually be a starter. I think he I think he could start because you yeah. have one year. Yeah. To know to find that out, mm-hmm. does he have one year in him? Yeah. To then replace a possibly both Lawson and Hughes. I think he, I think he's more of a, a replacement for Lawson. You know what's really funny though that I haven't mentioned before? What? And I do it when I edit it, but I forget afterwards mm. because it's. I can only watch so much of us. <laughs> I really can. We never mention Murphy. We're always talking about loss and Hughes replacing us. We never mention Trent Murphy at all. Yeah, I know. I remember liking that signing, and then I forgot he was on the team. Because he never was, he on, was the never on the field. <laughs> I was just like, okay. Hey, why do we mention Murphy? Why don't we mention Murphy? Everyone else forgot about him too. So you're saying that Allen could definitely 
progress into being a starter. Allen could start in the rotation on the, right now. On the on the left side of the defense. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I think he's more of a replacement for Lawson than he is for Hughes. Um, he's just not the same type of player as Hughes is. No, he doesn't have the speed, obviously. Right. With the amount of edge rushers that are coming out each year, you could definitely try to pick one up. The only problem is he's going to be a rookie. Mm -hmm. um, so he's not acclimated to the system. So he'll probably play on par with Hughes right. in that respect. Mm -hmm.